Once you have soldered and properly connected your control boards, it'll look something like this. And you can take a standard USB cable and plug it into the computer. And I like to do this before I connect any of the motors. The USB cable will supply five volts. See the light come on. But for some of the programming, you need the full power. So we'll go ahead and connect the battery. Power that on. So you can go onto our website and download the latest GUI interface and the latest firmware. And once you have downloaded that, right now it only works on a PC. So once that's downloaded, you can open it up. And one of the first things you need to do is select the proper COM port. So on my computer, I have it set up to COM3. We'll select that and you can go ahead and connect. If you don't have the latest firmware on your control board, you can come over here and do the firmware upgrade. Just select the newest firmware and flash it to this control board. So I'll go back to basic. And before I plug in the motors or go any further, I want to calibrate the accelerometer. So this is your sensor. And in the instructions, um, it gives six different positions that you need to calibrate your sensor. So you'll start with it in the first position. And when we mount our sensor on the Ghost, we're actually mounting it upside down. So you want to start with it in this position. And in the software, you can see under the sensor category, we're going to have it as negative Z and Y. And this is showing that this is the position that we, we have the sensor mounted. So this is the first position we're going to calibrate it. You hold it there and hit calibrate ACC. And then you'll move it to all six positions as shown in the diagram on the instruction manual. And when you put it in a new position, hit calibrate ACC. Move it to a new position, hit calibrate ACC. Once all six positions are completed, then you can hit the right button. After you've calibrated your sensor, then you can plug in the motors and we'll move on to the next steps. We already have the ghost set up right here, so I'll move from this control board to the one on the ghost with the motors plugged in. So this one's already calibrated, but I'll just talk you through the general steps and things that you need to know about the software. There are a lot of advanced features in the software, but I'm just going to cover the general ones that you need to know for programming. So on the basic page, you'll see over here the motor configuration. And right now we have the power set to 200, 170, and 200. If these values are too high, then your motors could start to overheat. So that's something to be aware of. Um, we also have the roll and pitch inverted. And it depends on how you plug in your motor. So if you plug in the motor one direction and the axis starts kind of swaying on you, then you'll know that you probably need to invert it. So the roll and pitch we have inverted. And if you select the auto button, then this will tell you how you want it inverted. It'll also tell you the number of poles, but for the motors we're using on here, they're all 14 poles. Sometimes the auto button will tell you that it's a number that it isn't. So just make sure these are all 14. And for our gimbal right now, we want these two inverted. And like I also said with the sensor, we want it negative Z and Y. And this is showing the direction that the sensor is mounted. Um, you can enter your PID settings the way we have them here. This is um, some general settings that we found to work well with these motors and with the battery. If you read in the instruction manual, it'll go over more in depth what the P, I, and D values are doing. In the advanced screen, um, the main thing you'll need to look at is that um, the motor outputs, you have the roll set to roll out, pitch, pitch out, yaw. Since we have an external yaw board, then you're going to select the yaw external board right there. And then under the sensor, you'll see there's the gyro high sensitivity. And we have this selected if you're going to be using more powerful, powerful motors 
and higher PID values, then you'll want this selected. This basically doubles the value of what you have set over here with PID. So the gyro high sensitivity is checked. And then under timings, we have the frequency set to high. If this is set to low, then you're going to start hearing uh, uh, the frequency from the control board. It's going to start buzzing and ringing. And the serial port speed. Then with RC settings, if you're going to control to a receiver and transmitter, then you can adjust those settings under here. Right now with it in follow mode, then we don't need to worry about the RC settings. If you're also going to use a joystick, then you'll need to come to the RC settings and adjust these. You'll most likely need to set it over in speed mode. And then over in follow mode, right now we have this enabled. You can disable the follow mode and you'll have just more of a straight mode where the camera will keep pointed in one direction. Excellent for running around and um, doing quick movement shots, but the camera only stays in one direction. So follow mode is really useful just for one operator. We have it selected right here for follow, pitch, roll, and yaw. And if you want your roll axis to have the follow mode as, as well, then you'll want to set this down to zero. And I'll show that real quickly. Most likely, you, don't, you want your roll to just stay at a level horizon. So I put that up to 90. But roll mix degrees, we have it at zero. We can write that. And now with the gimbal, if we tilt it, it'll actually follow left and right. So for most of our filming, we don't want this roll axis to be moving on us. We want a nice level horizon. So I bump this all the way up to 90 degrees. And we'll say right. And now with that at 90 degrees, you can move the gimbal around left and right, and it's not going to follow you. Um, another thing to be aware of is right here we have follow yaw, and there's the pitch and yaw offset. And if you're in the follow mode, and say for instance, your camera is tilted up, and you're holding the grips, but for some reason your camera is tilted up. This means that you need to adjust the offset. So you can do the auto button and it'll correct that for you. You can also do this with the yaw offset. So say the gimbal is facing over here. I'm holding the grips. So if I'm holding the grips like this, but for some reason the lens is pointing off to the side, you can actually adjust that yaw offset. So we'll put that back. If when you're operating too and the, the yaw moves off to the side, you can easily just push it back into the normal position. Then you'll see dead band degrees and expo curve. So the dead band degrees means that I can tilt the camera down 10 degrees and up 10 degrees, and until I get to that 10 degrees, it's not going to move on me. So right here, the camera is staying level. But once I get past 10 degrees, then it starts to follow. Same with tilting down. After I'm beyond that 10 degrees, it'll follow. And the expo curve is just how smooth you want it to follow. And we have this set to 10. It means it's just not going to be as jerky. You can play around with these settings and find what's going to work for your style of shooting. If you want it really responsive, then you're going to put this down you know, more towards zero. And if you want to be able to move and have, it, have the camera follow really slowly, then you will probably bump this number up higher. And that covers the basics of the software.